Impact of the iPod on Society by David Lemmick. The iPod was not the first wave of portable music players. CD players and Walkmans were the ancestors to the iPod, using CDs and cassettes to play back music. Both had their run selling quite well while they were on store shelves. But before these devices were developed, people were confined inside and at one place to listen to music. This did allow for a sense of community amongst listeners. Gramophones were the first in a long line of at-home music players, activated by cranking the lever on the side. The jukebox, while it was more of a commercial line of music players, was a staple in music history and would be used through most of the later half of the 20th century. Then came the stereo systems, which in some cases are still very common. Early stereos used 45 RPMs, but would later convert to CDs once those gained more popularity. As mentioned in the previous slide, music was often shared and used in parties or gatherings. It wasn't nearly as common to find one person listening to a gramophone or stereo by themselves. It was a group activity. You would never see anyone walk into work with a gramophone in their pocket. Everything was stationary. Then the CD player stepped into the spotlight in the 1980s, marking a new revolution in how we experience and listen to our music. People had the newfound ability to take their music wherever they go from just across the street to the other side of the country. Like their early, earlier counterparts, CD players had to use a disc to play music, which was something that iPods would later correct. Even then, there were mobile cases that people could carry around. Mobility was a tradition that would continue through the turn of the century. Nowadays, it's rare to see someone who doesn't own an iPod or MP3 player. They're everywhere. Most of the music played today via portable devices is listened to by a single person. While there are iHomes and other stereo systems to play music out loud, most prefer the option of earphones. Teenagers are the largest target population of Apple, and they are the strongest influence group. So are the effects that iPods come with, for better or for worse. iPods have allowed users to access almost any artist or band they can think of. With the constant supply of new tracks and albums coming in daily, there's no end to the amount of music someone can find iPods also have a feature on iTunes that allows for people to share their music. This is a huge benefit for people, now that they can actually legally share their playlist with nearby friends safely and easily. iPods have serious health risks that come with it. They are horrible for ears. According to MSNBC.com, people who use the ancestor of the iPod, Walkmans, have been diagnosed with tinnitus, which is an internal ringing or even the sound of whooshing or buzzing in the ears. And with the current generation blaring their iPods, these symptoms are only the tip of a very big and dangerous iceberg. The iPod is also terrible for the environment. Some million pounds of iPod material are in landfills, and they are made up of harmful chemicals that affect nature. So what are iPods? The savior of music and a staple in our generation? Or is it a monstrous beast that will be the downfall of man? Is there a gray line somewhere between the sides? Either way you look at it, iPods are here to stay, and their popularity is only rising. Ignore the guy walking across the picture here, and take a look at these statistics. Between 2004 and 2005, the number of iPods sold increased five times. Yes, that's 12 million more iPods out on the streets. That was six years ago. Just imagine how many are sold nowadays in a fiscal year.